Okay, hi, hello, what's up? So, uh, I've been graduated from high school for a good while now, and I've been feeling pretty nostalgic, so I decided, hey, let's drop by the elementary school I grew up in, just relive some memories, you know? And well, for whatever reason, the faculty fucking did not appreciate me being there at all. I'm not completely sure why, but I think I boiled it down to one thing. It's because I'm not popular enough. So, uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a Facebook. I don't get it. I just don't understand. I've been staring at this profile for months at this point, and I'm still not popular. How the fuck are people doing this? I gotta be famous now, surely. God damn the fuck! Alright, that's it. Something in this room is gonna make me popular. I'm gonna find something in this room that'll grab people's attention. What could I use? I fucking love rubber bands. They're incredible. One of the greatest objects of all time. Patented in 1845, these powerful elastic ovals have gained a ton of popularity over the years by being useful in an endless variety of situations. They can be used to hold things together, they can be flung like slingshots, they can explode watermelons, balls, and they also come in a bunch of different colors, thicknesses, circumferences. I I'm honestly getting emotional just talking about all of this. But as awesome as rubber bands are, I think we can all agree that there's still one big glaring issue with them. <clears throat> They aren't silly enough. No matter when you grew up, you undoubtedly remember a ton of the big trends and popular toys that pretty much identify your childhood decade. And being born in arguably the best year of all time, 2003, I would say that my nostalgic sweet spot for this kind of thing would definitely be the late 2000s to the mid 2010s, uh, right about here. I look back at this era so fondly, I could go on forever about the memories I have from these years. Some big personal memories of mine include, but are not limited to, the Nintendo DSi and Wii popularizing gaming with the family, the first ever iPhone changing the world, and of course, what I consider to be the culmination of all of that, rubber bands that were shaped like a objects silly bands. Rubber bands that just couldn't be serious for a second. These things were huge in elementary school, quite possibly the biggest school trend I've ever been a part of, and there were a lot of those. Throughout my time at school, I've lived through fidget spinners, bottle flipping, dabbing, rainbow loom, cup stacking, Fortnite dances, God only knows what other horrendous garbage I'm forgetting. But regardless, silly bands were the first of these trends that I ever experienced, and to this day, I think they absolutely trounce all these other trends by a landslide. For those unfamiliar, the general concept of silly bands is, a uh, you know rubber bands, and you know cows? <laughs> Fucking love the 2010s, dude. Basically, silly bands were silicone rubber bands that came in packs of 24, coming in hundreds of different shapes, spanning dozens of themes, brands, franchises, etc, etc. An incredibly simple idea that ended up getting so unbelievably popular that it ended up spawning news stories, celebrity endorsements, video games, a shitty CGI movie, the works. And more on all of that later. Silly bands were originally sold in 2008, but even then, they weren't an entirely new concept. Several years earlier in 2002, animal rubber bands were sold, which were pretty much the same thing as silly bands, even with a few designs that silly bands just kind of blatantly stole. That's nice. These original animal rubber bands were created with the intention of reducing waste, turning rubber bands from a disposable item into something people would want to keep and reuse, which was honestly a pretty noble cause. Now, silly bands, they're just fucking bracelets. You just wear them on your wrist, and then when you take them off, their true shape is revealed, resulting in fun and giggles. I mean, I guess you could use these as a substitute for regular rubber bands, but like, don't. Now listen, I understand that a bunch of bracelets shaped like giraffes and ironing boards probably don't sound very interesting, but if you were in elementary school during the Silly Bands explosion of 2010, you know exactly how significant these things were. It was a phenomenon that, in my opinion, has yet to be surpassed. Everybody in my class had these things. Everybody was obsessed with collecting them, trading them, finding new shapes and colors no one else had. It was an epidemic, and I loved it. And sure, a lot of these other fads were objectively more popular than Silly Bands overall, the closest contender in my opinion being fidget spinners. But what exactly made these silly bands so special to me compared to all these other trends? Well, aside from my general nostalgia for the era, I can think of two things. Number one, they weren't cringe. Now, I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to things like Fortnite dances, dabbing, fidget spinners, anything that people might label as cringy, honestly, I don't really find myself minding them that much. For the most part, I just see it as kids being kids, and even if it can be embarrassing, I guess, there really isn't anything inherently wrong with that. However, if we take fidget spinners, for example, oh boy, the internet sure did screw up that notion. Good god. Kids enjoying kid things isn't a problem in my opinion. It's when the older kids and god forbid the adults get involved and stuff like this starts popping up online that I start feeling like maybe the trend is overstated its welcome and needs to be destroyed immediately. The internet is a very different place now than it was during the Silly Bands era, and as such, I don't really think it had the chance to make the trend cringy like it tends to do with modern fads now. Silly Bands weren't milked for views or followers, they just passed through for a few months and then faded away peacefully for the most part. Granted, a few questions 
questionable rap songs arose from this time period, but to me, these actually felt tasteful. They had charm. It really felt like these people were just enjoying the trend with us, you know? They made these videos because they liked silly bands, not because everyone else liked silly bands. And the second reason I think silly bands were a special fad I mean, come on, guys, I don't think you understand. Maybe it's just the fact that I was a kid when these things hit it big, but I never experienced anything that could replicate the energy I felt during my school's big silly bands outbreak. Again, fidget spinners were a contender. They were around when I was in eighth grade. But based on my experience, the sheer impact of these things on schools didn't even come close to silly bands. It was just kind of like everyone had a fidget spinner, and that was about it. You saw them everywhere, but that was the extent of it. Silly bands, though, oh man, they legitimately took over. They completely altered the dynamic of school for a solid month. We no longer went to school every day, we went to fucking Silly Band Island. There was a whole Silly Bands economy in place. Some people were lucky and just started with a full wrist of Silly Bands right off the bat, but if you were like me, you started with nothing and had to slowly work your way up to the top. The only way to get yourself in there was to either find a stray Silly Band on the ground or something, or hope a generous friend would lend you one of theirs. I still vividly remember the very person who gave me my first ever Silly Band, and it was a Black Five. I was in. And once you were in, I mean you were freaking in. Like I was constantly glancing at people's arms to see what shapes and colors they had that I'd eventually harass them for. Is that kid over there wearing a horrendous shirt with ugly ass sleeves or do they just have 200,000 silly bands on each arm? Over time, various celebrities even started talking about and collaborating with silly bands. Bands based on TV shows we grew up with started appearing, the media was going crazy about these things, and that just fed our excitement about them even more. There was also, of course, a whole hierarchy of silly band values in place. Lowest value, generic shapes and generic colors. Baby's for silly bands right here. Then above those were the shapes and colors that were just cooler, and people would trade for the ones that appealed to them specifically. Personally, I always liked the ones that were based on characters from TV shows and movies, since they were the ones that actually represented things I liked at the time. And after those, you had the gimmick silly bands. Tie-dye colors, glow-in-the-dark, interesting textures, these were heavily sought after. And this might be a bit too cool to reveal in this video, but uh, I was actually the kid who introduced silly rings to school one day, shaped like musical instruments. Someone in my family gave them to me as a gift, and I took that opportunity to shake up the Silly Bands economy in my grade. I can't even find photos of them online because they weren't even official Silly Bands products. Honestly, most of the bands in circulation probably weren't even made by the official brand. But we were kids, we didn't care. If it was a rubber band shaped like something, it counted, goddammit, and that was the beauty of it. Trading those Silly Rings was how I got my first tie-dye Silly Band, and by extension, how I got popular. Twelve years later, I have no friends. Aside from this stupid fucking triangle. Uh, Pentagon. Finally, I remember one day I went to some arcade where they had silly bands as one of the prizes, and I caved. I bought a ton. I spent the rest of that weekend thinking I was hot shit, suffocating my arms in rubber bands before eventually realizing that I had completely killed the magic of silly bands for myself by eliminating any desire to keep collecting them. And that was around the time the trend started slowing down. Of course, all good things must come to an end, and all those silly bands that brought us so much joy ended up getting silly banned from schools across the country. Man, they're fucking letting anyone get famous these days, huh? Kids were just getting too distracted in their classes, talking about silly bands, trading silly bands, and honestly, fair enough, that very much did happen, I was one of them. I mean, fun things can't last forever, right? Cause God forbid a social phenomenon brings kids together and distracts them from their classes in elementary school. Although, to be fair, there were other issues. People cutting off their blood circulation by wearing a thousand silly bands on one arm, and people crying about getting their silly bands stolen or broken by other students, or just regretting the trades they were making. And yeah, things like that definitely justify the removal. But still, my god, what an adventure. And I just didn't ever get anything like this from any later trends. There may have been plenty of other things that have gotten objectively more popular, but it's the community aspect of silly bands that I'll always remember their era for. Everybody talked to everybody about their silly bands. It didn't matter if they were your friend or not, you didn't even have to be in the same class or grade. These stupid little rubber bands brought everyone in my school together in a way that I just haven't seen since, and they'll always be special to me for that reason. At this point, it's been over a decade since these things were relevant, and nowadays, people only bring them up to reminisce over the good times. It's actually kind of sad looking at the official social media accounts for silly bands now. They nostalgia bait so hard on Twitter, they're constantly tweeting stuff like, you remember us, right guys? We were huge in your childhood and we're still relevant now too, right everyone? Ugh, silly bands. And like, yeah, I just sucked your cock about those memories for a significant period of time, but like, stop man, this is just embarrassing. The silly band's Facebook account has 1.3 million followers and their posts get no interactions. That's sad. They have an Instagram account where, uh, I mean, yeah, and a TikTok with...
Well, silly band sure know how to shut me the hell up. But then again, not really, because they're doing NFT shit, apparently. What a fall off. Well, if silly bands are talking themselves up so much these days, hell, let's enable them. I sure am feeling nostalgic today. And hey, this fad might be fucking dead, but it wouldn't be the first time I dug up a corpse. Let's check out the silly band's website, shall we? Going on the silly band's website to buy silly bands nowadays is, uh probably one of the saddest things you could do. This is just depressing. Thankfully, I got really lucky and stumbled upon this sick Black Friday deal. Using this discount, I can buy all 35 packs, over 800 silly bands, for a measly $72. Still just a bunch of fucking rubber bands though. Do you realize how many rubber bands I could cop at Office Depot for that amount? I should also mention they got stickers for sale here, and what is actually the point of these? The whole novelty of silly bands comes from the fact that it's a rubber band shaped like something. You can make literally any shape or photo into a sticker. This is not special at all. Even by sticker standards, these are some of the lamest stickers anyone could own. For the bands, sure, I'll pay $72, but fuck the stickers. A purchase! Man, talk about buyer's remorse, but at least I can thoroughly review these things now. Oh, uh, what's up, Dr. Triangles? Uh, hey, Flish. Uh, what'd you order? Eh, uh, you don't want to know. I mean, I literally asked. Man, will you just fucking get out of here? Uh -huh. Isosceles piece of shit. Now let's take a look at some of the packs here. One thing you'll definitely notice while scrolling through all the packs here is that a lot of the silly bands you remember from your childhood aren't here. And that's simply due to the fact that so many companies figured it'd just be easy enough to make their own versions of the bracelets under their own name. This actually prompted the creator of silly bands to file lawsuits, which is pretty absurd considering this wasn't even an original concept to begin with. And even if it was, I mean, it's fucking rubber bands shaped like stuff. It's really not worth suing over. Many of the packs available here are pretty unremarkable when you get down to it. A lot of these are just generic animal shapes, loosely separated into different themes like zoo and rainforest, and they definitely vary in quality. For example, this gorilla one is so finely detailed, it's got hair on its ass. And then we've got these ones, which look like they just came out of a gorilla's ass. It's also pretty strange how much the accuracy of these shapes differs from pack to pack. Most of them are pretty solid, all things considered, but others are just questionable? You can definitely tell which packs were released first, like here's the fun pack, and man oh man, fun indeed. This is just a freaking party, man. I mean, I have always wanted to make my arm feel like a woman's restroom. Now let's get into the licensed silly bands. This company sure does try to remind everyone how they're totally still relevant and hip these days, and might I say, nothing screams modern quite like packs of silly bands based on Farmville, Angry Birds, Ike Harley, Kim Kardashian, and Justin Bieber, like god damn. We're practically living in the future here. This Angry Birds pack is great. You gotta love how they awkwardly try to shove in the bird's facial features in a way that just looks super rough and unnecessary, especially since the bird outlines themselves would have worked fine. The Justin Bieber pack. I mean, it sure was 2010. Shit, how'd that one Bieber song from 2010 go? Fucking something about infants, I'll bing it later. Speaking of infants, Kim Kardashian silly bands? Oh man, the quintessential pack of silly bands for the elementary schoolers in this product's target audience. We've got some letters, we've got some objects, we've got some humans, and of course, we've got this nice pink beak. There's a Hershey's themed pack sporting all these iconic Hershey's shapes and randomly containing an ampersand for no reason. Moving on. We've also got iCarly silly bands. iCarly was my shit back then, and this is actually a really great fit. iCarly and silly bands, two very strong representations of the year 2010, coming together to create a pack of bracelets that freaking sucks. Okay, so you've got these crime scene chalk outlines that barely, if at all, represent the iCarly characters. And then you just got texting acronyms? Like, there's already another designated pack specifically for those, and both of these packs include different TTYLs in them for some reason. And what do these even have to do with iCarly? Is it literally just because the characters in the series run a web show? Is that it? And wow, BRB? Man, I'd have killed to be the kid with the Be Right Back silly band on my wrist. The fucking phrase you say before taking a piss. We've got packs based on Spongebob and Yo Gabba Gabba, two shows I thoroughly enjoyed during different periods of my childhood, and it's pretty cool that they made my favorite character Broby multicolored. I'll hand it to Silly Bands, the sheer scarcity of these special bands actually made them feel unique. If you had a multicolored, glow-in-the-dark, or otherwise abnormal flavor of Silly Band, you were cool. End of story. But my personal favorite Silly Bands pack right now, and the definition of cool, is the Troy Lee Moto X pack. Bless you. Also, who the fuck? Apparently some motorcycle thing. The kids like motorcycles, right? We've got the iconic logo that the kids surely recognize. This thing, that thing, just the name Lucas. Wide range of appeal on that one. And last but not least in this pack, my all-time favorite silly band shapes. The internet loves skulls these days, and I gotta say, I'm a fan of them myself. And well, this pack contains some skull and crossbones silly bands, and... 
This is just fucking sad, man. This is just fucking sad. Oh my, that was quite the experience. It was pretty fun to look back at these things and talk about my experience with them. And I'll say it was definitely worth dropping $72 for. No, the fuck it wasn't. Uh, hey, is it safe to come out now? I'm hungry as hell. Uh, yeah, sure, help yourself. Hey, what's up with all these multicolored silicone bracelets all over the floor? It's a long story. Oh. So, this is what you ordered, huh? A bunch of rubber bands? Why? They're not just rubber bands, Pete. They're silly bands. They don't look that silly to me. This actually looks pretty pathetic. Pete, I- you don't get it, okay? I'm trying to get popular, and these things were the shit in 2010, okay? People get mad nostalgic for these things, trust me. <sighs> what, like, even girls? Do girls get nostalgic over this shit, too? I mean, yeah, everyone- <laughs> All right, well, man, you've sold me. You gonna let me take any of these? I mean, have at it, man. It's not like we can actually wear them properly anyways. Ain't no fucking arms up in here. Actually, about that. Oh, man, check this out. What the he- Four hour arm? When did you even buy this? Oh, I didn't. I found this under the neighbor's window. That's the crazy part. Oh, no shot. I'm not drinking that, bro. Wow, really? Fine, more arm for me. Oh, man, look at me now. I can wear more silly bands than the world could ever be ready for! Jesus Christ. Girls, girls, let's see. Uh, Justin Bieber, Hello Kitty, Barbie... Oh, and Kim Car- no. Khloe Kardashian. Alright, man, well, I'm ahead to the club and get silly with some of the ladies. What the actual- Pete, are you even old enough to drink? Uh, I have no idea. Anyway, see ya, man. Thanks a lot, by the way. W wait, I thought you said you were hungry. <laughs> oh, trust me, man. I'm gonna be eating real good tonight. <laughs> see ya. is my life. And that about does it for the tale of silly bands themselves. The trend faded away at the end of 2010. No one really talked about them anymore, and they slowly started to become just a thing of the past. A few months later, out comes Silly Bands the video game! Silly Bands play the craze for Nintendo DS. Look, I know what I said earlier about trends like fidget spinners and bottle flipping and stuff, and I still believe that Silly Bands were a cooler and better trend to be a part of, but at least with these trends, I can kinda see how you'd make a game out of them. Or at least just a stupid iPhone app or something, they're perfect for that sort of thing. In fact, at one point, there was a Silly Bands mobile game available for download, and based on this trailer, goddamn, I missed out. This is insane. The game was eventually removed from the App Store, but rest assured this brand is still totally thriving. Now, considering the idea of Silly Bands couldn't work out as a mobile game, imagine what a Nintendo DS game about them would be like. Oh boy, this ought to be something special. Now, to be fair, the DS has all kinds of games based on real-world toys. Most of these actually make sense to exist, in my opinion, because the products they're based on have some sort of personality or substance to them, which makes it easy to imagine what a video game about them could be like. But Silly Bands? How are you gonna make a physical Nintendo DS game that you had to go to GameStop and buy about Silly bands. Honestly, I can't say I'm not intrigued. Stuff like this is right up my alley. I've always been fascinated with video games based on real-world products, especially on the DS and Wii. I always know they're not gonna be good, but they're still interesting to me. And Silly Bands is certainly no exception. Hell, this game in particular even goes the extra mile and contains an exclusive video game themed pack of Silly Bands, which is honestly pretty cool. But now let's actually play the game. Got any guesses of what it'll be like? What, with all these crazy shapes, characters, and objects to take inspiration from, you'd think they came up with something crazy for this game. Game, right? Something that really captures the essence of silly bands and the trend surrounding them, right? Well, let me just show you what this game's actually about. Give me a second. The f so, much like the popular mobile game Angry Birds, this game involves using the DS's touchscreen to pull back and fling these Silly Bands at structures to destroy them? Why is the Silly Bands DS game Angry Birds? How did they even come up with the idea to make it an Angry Bird. I mean, this isn't even remotely what Silly Bands are actually used for in real life at all, but okay, I mean, I guess you could try flinging Silly Bands like a slingshot, but like, don't. Silly Bands were made to be worn like bracelets, and beyond that, they were made to be collected. That was their sole purpose. And like, I get it, a game about collecting Silly Bands and putting them on your wrist doesn't really sound that fun, so it kind of makes sense that they'd resort to making some dumb shit like this. I mean, obviously all they ever cared about was the cash anyways. But before I opened this game to find out what it was, I made a quick assumption of what what I thought the game was gonna be like, and it was way better than this. I imagined a very low budget, low effort platformer, where you enter a stage as some generic silly band, like, I don't know, a dog or something. 
and then there'd be different silly bands throughout the stage that would act as power-ups that gave you special abilities based on their shape. Become a frog silly band to get high jumps. Become a car silly band for fast-paced driving segments. Become a The Incredible Hulk silly band to destroy walls. You know, something like that. It's not super inspired, but it's still way more creative than a f***ing Angry Birds clone, and they barely even tried to make this feel like a game about silly bands. The whole draw of silly bands was that they came in a ton of different cool shapes, but in the game, it's... The silly bands that we're using are circles. We're launching circles, like, what? If you were in the second grade and showed up to school wearing a bunch of circle-shaped silly bands, even the damn teachers would bully your ass. But all right, fuck it, let's just play it. We start with this main menu that plays some rather mischievous music in the background. Like, whoa, things are about to get silly up in here. Firstly, tapping this armless peg-legged freak in the corner brings up a screen that asks you if you want to erase all your data. The idea of losing all of my silly bands play the craze data is genuinely terrifying to me, so I'm out of here. Let's start with the adventure mode, guys. We're going on an adventure. It's Angry Birds. So we've got four worlds here, each one having 10 levels and its own distinct theme. In total, 40 shitty Angry Birds levels for $20. Nature is the first world we play in, and guys, get a load of this plot. Some silly bands have been kidnapped and imprisoned. You must unlock the cages to collect them. What? So instead of shooting silly bands at these structures to kill pigs, we shoot them in order to free these imprisoned silly bands from their cages? Like, does this game hear the words that are coming out of its mouth? Who is out here kidnapping rubber bands? What kind of universe are we in right now? Oh, back from a long day of kidnapping people I see, huh? Got any pictures? All right, hear me out. Someone on the dev team was definitely smoking the silicone they used to make these damn silly bands with that fucking story. But I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's basically this game's way of pretending this makes any sense as a silly bands escapade. So we go through each level with various arrays of silly bands most of them being shaped like stupid ass circles. Each level has a few cages we need to touch in order to free the silly bands trapped inside. Those silly bands have interesting shapes, but that doesn't mean squat because they don't do anything and just get sent to your collection. Once you free all of the caged silly bands in one level, you unlock the next one, and you just keep going and going until you either beat the game or kill yourself. Now of course, new level elements come into play as you progress, attempting to make things interesting, but ultimately failing. For starters, differently colored blocks have different levels of resistance, and similarly, differently colored silly bands have different strength levels. So to reduce the resistance of a certain block, you've got to hit it with a band of equal or greater strength. Basically the same idea as the different materials of blocks in Angry Birds, just way more confusing. The further into the game we go, the sillier the level elements start to get. Some levels have these floating silly bands projectiles that get added to your ammunition upon being touched, and we've got exploding blocks which are just nuts. $20 this game. Then we got sticky blocks, trampoline blocks, clouds that drop various items when you pass through them, magnets that alter your trajectory. My god, silliness overload, holy shnikey. Finally, there's my personal favorite, this purple block. Now what I want you to do is look real closely at what this block does, and just try to describe to me what it's doing, okay? Have a look. Pretty crazy, right? So, how would you describe the function of that block? Because, according to the game, <clears throat> this purple block is a batter, which sends the projectile which strikes it in the direction indicated. Fucking what? This game is just an incoherent pile of nothing. And that applies to the level design too. Most of these levels just feel like randomly placed blocks, and the level elements I just mentioned can make things a bit more fun, but it never feels like they're being put to any meaningful use. There are plenty of ways you could make interesting levels and gimmicks with these set pieces, but they never did that. They didn't even attempt to play around or experiment with these pieces, and as such, none of these levels even remotely stick out. The themes of each world, nature, maritime, party, and fantasy, don't have anything to do with the gameplay at all either. Regardless of what theme you're in, the levels still just feel like random messes of tiles. A lot of levels will have these impenetrable stone structures that go with the theme of the level, I guess, but those are just annoying and get in your way. I mean, at this point, the only thing that can save this game from being dumb AF is the different projectiles available to take these structures down with. I hope they're interesting at least. Well, aside from the differently colored circles, we've also got stars, which, holy shit, are actual silly bands you can actually wear in real life. That's exciting. Ripping off the blue bird from Angry Birds, this star star-shaped projectile splits into five circles when you tap the screen after launching it. However, these circles fly in five completely different and unpredictable directions from each other, making it borderline impossible to achieve whatever you hope to achieve with them. Then we've got the Bomb Silly Band, another wonderful silly band for the kids, straight out of the organized crime pack. This bomb lets out an extremely pitiful explosion upon being tapped, and just... God damn it, how much longer do I have to talk about this? Finally, there's the paintbrush. Tapping the screen after it's launched makes it explode, and every block within the explosion gets painted yellow, thus making them less resistant. Don't believe me? Let's see it in action! 
And yeah, that is quite literally everything this game has to offer. After 39 mindless levels, we eventually reach the very end. Finally, it's time to beat this game and show it who's boss! Wait a second, this is like, kind of like Angry Birds. After beating that final level, we get some nice, long, musicless, unskippable credits that show us just how many people in 2010 sat in an office every day to make this game a reality. So, final thoughts? <sighs> like, obviously this game isn't worth anyone's time, especially now that it's been over a decade since silly bands were relevant. I'm pretty sure everyone expected that conclusion before knowing what the game even was. Ignoring the very predictable lack of content, the game just feels so slow and clunky. The projectiles are floaty as hell and none of their damage ever feels impactful, so it's never even satisfying to win a level. This did not need to be on the DS. This type of game is perfect for a single screen phone or tablet, where it's easy to see an entire level all at once. The DS's vertical orientation does not lend itself to a good Angry Birds experience in my opinion. Everything's so zoomed in, and you have to pan the screen for a good while just to get an idea of the level you're working with. Now, I will admit, sometimes the game can be a bit fun. Sometimes, it can be satisfying to do some damage in these levels, and gather all the collectibles and such. But do you want to know where else those things are satisfying? Angry Birds. Even though this game can have its fun moments, I'm sorry, but whether it's now or 10 years ago, Angry Birds has always been a better option than this. It costs 99 cents, as opposed to the $15 it still costs to buy this game new. You can download Angry Birds as an app, rather than needing to buy a whole ass cartridge and have it take up your DS's game slot. And Angry Birds has hundreds of levels, as opposed to this game's fucking 40. Silly Bands Play the Craze would have honestly been a fine enough DSiWare title, something you could download for a low price to give yourself a quick distraction. As a physical game, though? <laughs> No! But all of that being said, we've also got a two-player mode, which is unlocked after beating a few levels. Maybe this will be the game's saving grace. Sure it will. Alright, time to call Pete. Wow, hey, you're visually attractive. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Uh, hey, are you a pharmacy? Because you're the only farm I see. Wait, no, 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 I said that wrong. Farm, farm animal? The only farm animal I see? No, 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 barn animal, barn animal. Uh, you, you're a barn animal. I have silly bands. Uh, I'm sorry, but I actually have a boyfriend. Oh. Would you like another one? Oh, shoot, I'm, hold on a second. What's up, man? Yo, Pete, they got a two-player mode on this Angry Birds. You wanna get in on this? Sure. Alright, well, it's been real, but I'm just not feeling the connection you're feeling. Sorry for the heartbreak, I'ma head out now. God, I am having a rough day. Anyways, what are we doing here? Um, it looks like we just take turns playing a level and whoever gets the highest score wins. Who would ever play this? Uh, whatever, you go first. Shit, not bad. Alright, your turn. Oh boy, I'm excited. <laughs> Let's... I'm about to get pissed. What, but like, you aren't yet? Nah, nah, but I'll get there. Oh man, that's scary. Yeah. And finally, we've got the collection, which is where all your silly bands go after you save them. Entering this mode allows you to look at them. <sighs> Something I haven't mentioned yet is that there are these coins and treasure chests in each level, and collecting all of them gets you an extra silly band for your collection. These things are very obnoxious to go out of your way and collect, especially since the game will literally stop you from going after them if you've already touched all the cages in a level. Being so goddamn tedious to complete, I gotta wonder, does anything actually happen when you fill out your collection by saving all the silly bands? I guess we'll never find out! And that's it for the Silly Bands DS game. I know I've said a lot about it, but there really isn't all that much to it. At all. But there is another Silly Bands related game on the DS out there that's a lot more slept on. That game is called Bands Mania, and there's a very good reason it's slept on. Because it's a Europe exclusive. Ain't no one waking up for that sh**. This game somehow found a way to make even less sense as a Silly Bands adventure than the other game. The whole Angry Birds clone thing just barely works as a Silly Bands game. It just barely makes enough sense. Bands Mania, however? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Basically, to sum this game up, uh, invaders have come to steal all the rubber bands. The interstellar rubber band creation competition is starting soon, and the Earthlings are the favored ones. 
What the hell are you saying? Good God, I am sorry, but you just can't make a video game plot about rubber bands. It's not gonna work no matter how hard you try. Just give up. As for the gameplay, we just pick one of the levels, denoted by plungers, and solve a puzzle. We have a limited supply of these orbs here, and we've gotta throw them at all of these silly band cages to beat each level. And of course, as you get through the levels, that gets harder and harder as new level elements and obstacles come into play. This is a very sad and strange game. I don't even feel like I should be talking about it right now. The whole silly bands aspect of this game definitely feels like it was phoned in at the last minute, because nothing about this game remotely fits their vibe at all. It all just feels very odd and isolated. I will say though, being an actual puzzle game, Bands Mania does require some legitimate brain thinking to get through, which is something I can't really say about the official Silly Bands game. The levels here actually feel carefully designed, and it feels like whoever made this game wanted it to be good. It's still really freaking boring and sad, and I didn't finish it, but based on what I did play, it definitely feels like the better game overall. Just kind of weird that they forced it into being a Silly Bands game when it very clearly isn't supposed to be one? Well, that leaves us with one last thing, Bands on the Run, an incredibly shitty CGI film based on Silly Bands. Once again, this is not an official Silly Bands product. In fact, the cover actually just touts it as the rubber band movie. That's captivating. Again, I genuinely don't even feel like I should be talking about this right now. We've strayed so far from the actual Silly Bands trend at this point, and I feel like we've just reached some type of rubber band hellscape. Now, I am not a movie reviewer, and honestly, the last thing I want to do is sit here for 45 minutes to watch this shit, let alone write a comprehensive review about it. It's not good. You can tell it's not good just by looking at it. Everybody knows this is not a good film, so I'm just gonna sit this one out for now and not even bother talking about it. This video is long enough already and it's about rubber bands, so the last thing it needs is to be twice as long because I reviewed an unrelated movie at the end of it. But that didn't stop me from buying the movie from eBay. Look, it even comes with a pack of bracelets based on the movie's characters, and that's honestly really charming. You know what? I take it back. Let's watch the damn movie. Let's just pop this bad boy into the- I don't have a disk drive. And so ends the tale of Silly Bands. I know I did a lot of shit talking about them today, but when all is said and done, I'll always remember these things fondly. Despite being the spawn of some pretty bad products, they were also the spawn of some pretty rad memories. I don't think I'll ever experience a trend like Silly Bands again, one that I'll be able to talk about for this long. They easily remain my all-time favorite fad I've lived through. And while I think it's embarrassing that the brand itself is trying so desperately to cling onto nostalgia and make itself feel all young and new again, I would be lying if I said I'm not always doing the exact same thing. I just don't want to grow up, and revisiting little eras like this all this time later can help a person feel like a kid again for a little bit. Oh man, what a day. And what are you up to, Pete? Oh, well, I've had a rough day. Had to reject a girl at the club, and had to suffer the humiliation of losing to you at Silly Bands for the DS. <laughs> and basically, since you went insane and spent like $100 on Silly Bands products, I decided it was only fair that I also drop a small fortune on a product based on something I hold near and dear. Check it. What? Mott's applesauce game for the Wii? The f what emotional attachment do you have to Mott's applesauce? Dude, sh sh I've got to focus. Uh, Pete, how much did we pay for this? Five grand. Sh